Reading 5 Strengthened with the power of his spirit Mysteries The New Testament presents various concepts about mysteries, and the book of Ephesians is no exception to this. According to biblical analysts, the Greek word mysterion appears 28 times in the New Testament, six of them in Ephesians. One mystery deals with the connection between heaven and earth, which was bridged by Christ. Having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Ephesians 1, verse 9 and 10. With the original mindset and education of a radical Jewish Pharisee, the Apostle Paul demonstrated the great mystery of an extreme change in himself in seeking to bring the Gentiles and the Jews into fellowship with Christ. The central theme of his preaching in Ephesus was how, through the atonement of Christ, The Gentiles are adopted as children of God and united as one body, along with the Jews in the church. Here is the power of the gospel and the work of the Holy Spirit. In Ephesus, this mysterious concept became a cultural revolution. The power of his spirit in the gospel. On his arrival at Ephesus, Paul found 12 brethren who, like Apollos, had been disciples of John the Baptist, and like him had gained an imperfect knowledge of the life and mission of Christ. These disciples in Ephesus were ignorant of the mission of the Holy Spirit that Jesus promised to his believing people to be the life and power of the church. When asked by Paul if they had received the Holy Ghost, they answered, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost, Paul inquired, and to what then were ye baptized? And they said, and to John's baptism. The apostle then proceeded to set before them the great truths which are the foundation of the Christian's hope. What would be our answer to the apostle Paul's question? If they had received the Holy Ghost, if it were asked today, The experience of the converts and the apostles' mission have great lessons for us today, for we too are placed in the world to minister to the Gentiles. The Apostle Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. We are baptized into the body of Christ, the Church. There are no more separations or divisions among us. We are united with each other as well as with Christ. Caste, creed, tribe, language, race, traditions, and customs will not separate us any longer. The Apostle Paul's experience in the ministry is an encouragement to us today as we seek to reach people who are mostly Gentiles. The Spirit qualifies Christ's followers. With deep interest and grateful, wondering joy, the disciples listen to the words of Paul. By faith, they grasp the atoning sacrifice of Christ and acknowledged him as their Redeemer. They were then baptized in the name of Jesus, and as Paul laid his hands upon them, they received also the baptism of the Holy Spirit, by which they were enabled to speak the languages of other nations and to prophesy. Thus these men were qualified to act as missionaries in the important field of Ephesus and its vicinity, and also from this center to spread the gospel of Christ in Asia Minor. The spirit of prophecy reiterates that one of the primary qualifications to be a missionary is to receive the baptism or the anointing of the Holy Spirit. 
The miraculous presence of the Holy Spirit was evident in the early apostolic church. Understanding the Great Mystery, the Holy Spirit It is not essential for us to be able to define just what the Holy Spirit is. Christ tells us that the Spirit is the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth which proceedeth from the Father. It is plainly declared regarding the Holy Spirit that, in his work of guiding men into all truth, he shall not speak of himself. John 15 verse 26 and John 16 verse 13. As the Apostle Paul presented various mysteries in his epistles, especially in his epistle to the Ephesians, the Holy Spirit is shown to be a mystery. We do not necessarily need to try to present arguments to define the nature of the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, we still need to understand the importance of His presence and work. His Nature and Perfect Work The nature of the Holy Spirit is a mystery. Men cannot explain it, because the Lord has not revealed it to them. Men having fanciful views may bring together passages of scripture and put a human construction on them but the acceptance of these views will not strengthen the Church. Regarding such mysteries, which are too deep for human understanding, silence is golden. The office of the Holy Spirit is distinctly specified in the words of Christ. When He is come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. John 16 verse 8 it is the Holy Spirit that convicts of sin. If the sinner responds to the quickening influence of the Spirit, he will be brought to repentance and aroused to the importance of obeying the divine requirements. His Spirit empowers and changes the inner man. Jesus explained how God the Father would bless those who ask for the Holy Spirit. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Luke 11 verse 13 The Holy Spirit is a gift from God to those who believe in him to provide them with the extra power they need to obey his will, to make changes in the inner man, and to unite them with heaven. When the sinner repents, believes in Christ, and is baptized, he is led to the fullest truth by the Holy Spirit. He will do God's will, obey His commandments as part of the heavenly family. In fact, this is how unity is established with the heavenly family, thanks to the Savior's atonement. Through the Holy Spirit's power, the repentant sinner unites with the Son and subsequently unites with the Father. This unity with Christ empowers him to perform the divine will to be witnesses on earth, transforming one's inherent evil character into the character of Christ and sharing the gospel through the power of his Spirit. In Acts 1 verse 8, we read, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Acts 4 verse 33. The presence of the Holy Spirit gave unity, obedience, and empowerment to the disciples, which led to a considerable transformation of their characters. The Holy Spirit fuels character building. The Holy Spirit is compared to the oil in the candlestick in the holy place of the sanctuary. He is the source of light for every person. In scriptures, he is also compared to and symbolized by a dove, rain, fire, and wind. He is the substance and essence of power. He loves, reasons, helps, guides, teaches, regenerates, and reproves. 
The promise of the Holy Spirit is not limited to any age or any race. Christ declared that the divine influence of His Spirit was to be with His followers unto the end. He will empower the believers of today if we will just ask Him. When we plead for the indwelling of the Spirit, we will experience the mystery of God dwelling in us and taking control of our lives. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeketh him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. John 14, verse 17 As many people know, today every airport has moving walkways, which make walking easier and save time. Similarly, the Holy Spirit's presence moves us along smoothly and faster in our spiritual journey, just like a moving walkway. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Galatians 5, verse 16 and 18. We human beings tend to gravitate towards sin and sinful ways. This is the sinful human nature, or the evil desire of humans. But the Holy Spirit develops the Christian's character so he may overcome these carnal desires that are so contrary to God's will and character. The definition of sin is the transgression of God's law. 1 John 3 verse 4 some sins may be categorized as sensual, superstitious, or social. Some of our actions may keep us from feeling that we are transgressing God's law. Because we love those sins and our carnal desires are tuned to worldly culture, habits, environment, and circumstances. However, they are not valid excuses. The Holy Spirit gives us a clear understanding of such situations. The Holy Spirit also warns us and gives us alerts. If we listen to Him, it is possible for us to take a detour in our spiritual journey and bypass those sinful desires. In this journey, the Holy Spirit also helps us to develop the fruit of the Spirit, which is found in the book of Galatians. If we love Christ, we will invite His Spirit. We may compare our spiritual condition today to that of the disciple Peter, shown in Luke 22. Christ identified the need for change in Peter's heart so that he could be a help to his fellow brethren. Considering the concept of conversion, an unconverted person is of no use to God's church. It is critically important to understand this and be converted. We know that the disciple Peter was with Christ and accompanied him wherever he went. He learned from Christ and had a willing heart to serve him. However, Peter's inner life had to change, and this is what Jesus desired. He knew that an unconverted leader would make no progress in his church. So he said to Peter, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. However, Peter said to him in verse 33, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Was Peter ready? No, not at all. He sincerely desired to be a follower of Christ, but he did not know himself and responded according to his innate understanding. We may be baptized and think that we are converted. We believe that we are with Christ, 
and we participate in all the church meetings. The question is, do we have the conversion that Christ wants of us? Do we understand what it means to be a genuine follower of Christ, to be truly converted and obedient? If we are blessed by His Spirit, there will be no Pharisaic legalism or liberalism in our obedience. It will not be based on fear or just a little thought about being saved. Rather, we will always yearn to be blessed, which comes from the bottom of our hearts with a genuine desire to please God. When he was with Christ, Peter was quite ignorant of the Savior's mission and message, even after spending close to three years with him. But then, that very same Peter received the Holy Spirit after Christ's ascension, as promised, and the Comforter made the change in Peter. The disciples' misunderstanding about the Gospel, transformation of character, and the true meaning of being a follower of Christ disappeared. He was transformed from the disciple Peter to the Apostle Peter. It was a significant change. We read in his epistle, 1 Peter 1, verse 21 to 23, Who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. This is the same conversion that we need to have through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ prayed for him, and after that, the Apostle Peter strengthened many of Christ's followers. His writings in the New Testament are still strengthening the believers today. Furthermore, Jesus said to his disciples, If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. John 14, verse 14 to 16. Self must die in us if we are to identify with the life that God desires for us. If we seek for his indwelling power, choose with all our hearts to obey his commandments, and are willing to change our lives according to his will, we will be blessed abundantly. Obedient disciples are led and illuminated by the Holy Spirit. Our priorities definitely matter. Conclusion Jesus set aside his divine nature and came as a human being to this world. He performed miracles and overcame temptation through the Holy Spirit. He never used his divine power for his own benefit. This shows what happens to human nature when it depends wholly on the Holy Spirit. We, too, need to rely totally on the Holy Spirit. We need to fulfill Jesus' commission through the Holy Spirit's power by choosing to be an instrument in His hands with total commitment. Let us change direction today. Let us pray without ceasing, asking for the Spirit of God more and more. In this way, we will abide in Christ, in the Spirit, as did Enoch. Then our lives will be strengthened with the power of His Spirit. We will succeed in our missions, and we will build our characters in the perfect design of Jesus' character. We need the anointing of His Spirit, the baptism of fire, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Let us make this our priority during this week of prayer and in the days to come. Let us unite ourselves as his representative family on earth with the family in heaven. He which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. 
Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Revelation 22, verse 20 and 21. This reading was written by D. Francis. You can find all the week of prayer readings in the description below. Thank you.